Hi there guys, this is Nikhil from Greedy Tech and in this video I am going to share with you some of the tips and tricks about Xiaomi Mi Pad. So guys, this is the Xiaomi Mi Pad in front of us and let me show you what we can do. So starting off, here is the power button and when we click it, we will see the lock screen and if we swipe up, it will unlock the device. And let's lock it again. And if you swipe it to the left, you will open camera. So there we have it. So guys, out of the box, this device is running MIUI version 6.3.3. So this is the camera app that is given in this device. So guys, I must say that the camera app is not up to the mark. I would suggest you to go with some other app, but let me show you what you can do with this present app. Let me tell you, you have no settings of the camera from here. That is, even if you press the menu button, or if you click the menu button you won't see any options or any settings all you have is a very few customizations or a few things or a few things to tweak with and if you want to go to the settings you have to directly go to the settings page and to the camera section so guys the only tweak over here is that you can swipe with one finger you can rotate it to change the exposure let's focus then we rotate to change the exposure let me do that once again just click to focus and then you rotate like that so there you have it you can change the exposure levels and you can get variation in the light sensitivity so that's pretty much it with the camera app let me show you where the camera settings are located so if you go into the settings you have a dedicated section called as camera over here and over here you have all these settings one important thing over here is that you can save the images or videos that you took using the Mi Pad directly to the SD card by simply enabling this option just in case if you find that the images are not moving to the SD card then I suggest you format the SD card so that's pretty much it about this camera app and let's go on ahead so guys this is the home screen UI that you are going to see once you unlock the device so this is the Samsung's tiles or card view well nothing much over here and this is our regular MIUI's home screen where all the apps are thrown onto the home screen so guys over here we can pinch with two fingers to go to this mode where you can simply select the icons and once you select them they disappear from the home screen and appear over here this can be used to simply move the apps from one home screen page to another so let's assume that I want to put all these three files in a folder. Now I can click on this icon to create a folder over there and I can simply click on it and start clicking on the icons to put them in the folder. Or else I can simply swipe on these icons to group them and press and hold and drop them in the folder. Oh, it's not happening. Let's just open it and drop it. So that's pretty much it. So apart from that, let me just put them here. So apart from that, to directly create a folder, simply press on an icon and move it over another icon and leave it. And a new folder will be created and the icons will be moved to that particular folder. So let's bring it back to normal. And you can do this and you can do this. You can simply go over here. To delete the folder let me just bring it back to normal so apart from that you have an option to move the apps add widgets change wallpaper or change the transitions let me show you that so this is the current transition and we can change it to something like this or this whichever you like so moving on ahead to uninstall any app all we need to do is press and hold on the icon and go to the top of the screen and you'll get an option to uninstall and when you click uninstall you get a nice animation and the app will be uninstalled and one nice thing about this is you don't have to wait until the app is uninstalled you just have to say which app to uninstall and the MIUI will uninstall in the background so that's one good thing that I like about it so let's move on by pressing this button over here 
you can go to recent apps menu so this is how you might be looking these are the current list of apps that are running in the background or the list of apps that i've just used if you are not able to see this view you might be looking at something like this so these are the icons view so if you want to get a snapshot view you can simply pinch to zoom and you'll get this view so once you are here you can simply close any particular app by swiping it up now it is killed or removed now if you want to enter into a particular app you can simply click on the app and you'll go to that particular app and let's say you want to remove both the apps at the same time you can simply press this cross button down below and it will kill both the apps so let me just open up a few apps quickly so let's go to the recent menu so over here we have three apps and just in case if you want to remove all the apps except this particular youtube app then simply swipe it down to lock it and once you press that button all the apps are deleted or all the apps are killed apart from this particular app and to unlock this app you can simply swipe it down and it is unlocked and next time when you click this button even that app will be removed so going on ahead we can also press and hold this button over here to go to the apps manager into the running section directly so that's one good shortcut over there so guys now let's go to the notification bar to pull down the notification bar simply swipe from the top side of the screen so to pull down the notification bar simply swipe from the top of the screen and this is the notification bar and you basically have two bars or two tables or two places or two faces you may want to call it so on the first thing you get all your regular app notifications and if you swipe it to the left you'll see all your toggles along with your bright screen brightness so there you have it so among these toggles the most important things are the performance toggle which is by default disabled which means that the cpu processor is currently in balanced mode so make sure that you enable it to set it to high performance just in case if you are feeling that your device is slow or if you are trying to play any high intensive game so to save battery life just leave it at the balanced mode and even if you leave it at the balanced mode you won't see much difference in the performance so moving on ahead another important thing is this disable button over here once you select that or once you enable that the capacity touch buttons down at the bottom are disabled let me just show you the touch buttons are now not working so to enable them once again all you need to do is press the power button and the home button both at the same time so there you have it you just got a toast saying that the navigation keys are working again so that's pretty much about this notification bar and just in case if you want to change the layout of these icons or to meddle with some other status bar tweaks then you can go to the settings and you have a separate page called notifications and over here you can change the toggle positions or manage the notifications that is if you don't want any particular application like candy crush showing notifications then you can block the access to that particular app from manage notifications and if you go to toggle positions as i have already said you can change the positions of these toggles like that so apart from that you have this option that says show notification icon by default you won't be able to see the icon of the notification app so one good option over here is show connection speed so once you enable it you will be able to see your network usage that is the amount of data that is currently being downloaded or uploaded by your device but mostly downloaded data so apart from that let's go to the our next tip so one thing i forgot to mention about the notification bar is you can directly take a screenshot from the notification bar you have a toggle over here that says screenshot and once you touch that it will take a screenshot and if you again go to the notification bar you can see a small notification over here saying that that's the screenshot has been captured at so and so time and you can choose to share it so apart from that if you don't want to go to the notification bar to take a screenshot all you need to do is press the volume down and power button both the, at the same time i know it might be a little hard to time it but just in case if you are having problems with that you can go to the notification bar and use the screenshot over there so going on ahead just in case if you want to install apps from a backup or if you have an apk or if a friend has shared you some app and it is lying in the downloads folder then if you want to install that particular app you need to go to the settings 
and then to security which is in this case privacy in MIUI and make sure you enable this option that says unknown sources so by default it is disabled like this and you need to enable it and press ok what it basically means is you are telling the OS or the operating system that you are going to install applications from the apk files so apart from that so guys the next step is in the installed app section where you can choose your default apps just go to the settings and the installed apps page or installed app section and you will be able to see a button that says default default down at the bottom over here and once you select that these are all the different things like launcher dialer messaging browser camera and you can choose default apps for these particular things so these are like the default apps that the system uses every time it wants to do something for example when you press the home button it will directly take to the default launcher over here so let's go to the launcher section so as of now there is only one launcher that is provided by MIUI and when you press home it will directly take you to that launcher only and let's assume you have two to three camera apps and if you want to change the default camera this is where you have to do it so let's go on so in this step I'm going to show you how you can add an app to the auto start list for example you have installed hike or whatsapp on this device and whenever you reboot this device those apps won't get turned on and you won't be able to receive notifications so just in case if you want to enable auto start of any application you need to do this following steps just go to settings and at the bottom you have this section called auto start just click on it and as you can see currently there are no apps listed over here you need to press this button over here and now you can add any app to start at the system startup let me add spider-man so what it basically does is you are allowing spider-man 2 application to run at the system start so you might want to consider turning on everything but what it basically does is slows your device down so make sure that you turn on only the important things and leave the rest alone so going on so in this next step I'm going to show you how to enable the floating window for any application this is specifically useful for apps like Facebook chat head where you get a floating window so for that you need to go to settings and go to install apps and let's assume that this game this anomaly 2 you want to enable floating window for this then you have this option over here that says turn on floating window just click on it and press ok to enable floating window for this particular app and just in case if you have facebook messenger on it you need to do the same thing to enable the facebook chat head so guys now just in case if you want to enable developer options you need to go to settings and go to about phone or about pad and just click on MIUI version 7 times and you need to do that 7 times and you will get the message saying that the developer options are enabled so to see the developer options you need to go to all the way up and select additional settings and at the bottom we have this option called developer options and once you click that these are all the developer options and you can simply enable or disable developer options with this toggle button over here and now it is disabled and when you press it and say ok the developer options are enabled and to enable USB debugging you need to enable developer options first and then enable this toggle to enable the USB debugging just in case if you want the Mi Pad to show the place where you are touching the screen there is an option down below that says show touches and once you enable that you will be able to see the place where you are touching so just in case if you see the screen there is a small dot following my finger it's an indication that I touched it over there so there you have it for some reason if you want to perform a hardware test then all you need to do is go to settings all the way bottom to the about pad and click on the kernel version a few times and it will take you to the testing zone so this is the LED test I guess let's go back actually we need to go to this page but I was pressing it so fast that I directly went it to the display test so you have all this test and just in case if you think that some hardware is not working properly you can test it over here so let's go back and now if you want to have the complete information about this pad then you need to click on internal memory few times to go to this information page 
Additionally, if you want to check the IMEI number of this device, then you can go to the status and check the IMEI number and everything else. Just in case, if you want to check the MAC address of this device or any other such details, then you need to go to the about pad and settings and status to check those details. So guys, next is a calculator app. This is your standard calculator app. And if you want the scientific calculator, there's a small button on the top. You need to press this and now you get the scientific calculator and finally to flash any update or to flash the stock ROM you can use the updater app and once it checks for any updates you get this three dots over here that is a symbol for menu and using this option that says select update package you can flash a stock ROM or a developer ROM and if you want to reboot into the developer mode you can select this option that says reboot to recovery mode to enter the recovery mode. So that's pretty much it guys. Thanks for watching the video. If you found this video to be helpful, please hit the like button and share it with your friends. And please subscribe to my channel to see more videos just like this.